Shalom everybody, my name is Godwill Yitzchak Sirengwani. I am from Beit Shuvu, Africa. I'm here to give a small teaching from this week's parashat, which is parasha um, Noah. Hallelujah. Parasha Noah. And Noah is a Hebrew word which means Noah. Parashat Noah is found in the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 6 verse 9 up to Genesis chapter 11 verse 32 the title of my teaching today is the reward of love so before we go into the reading of the Torah let's bless the reading of the Torah Baruch Ata Adonai Elohenu Melecha Olam Asher Kitshanu Bemisvotaf Tetzvanu Laasok Bedivrei Torah Blessed are you Lord our God King of the Universe who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to be busy with the Torah. Amen. So, I'm going to read from Genesis chapter 6, verse 11, up to 13. And then I'll also read from Genesis chapter 7, verse 4, as we build up to the teaching of today. Verse 11. Now the earth was, was, um, now the earth was ruined before God, and the earth was filled with violence. God saw the earth, and behold, it was ruined, because all flesh had corrupted their way upon the earth. Then God said to Noah, The end of all flesh is coming before me, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. Behold, I am about to bring ruin upon them along with the land. So we are seeing here, that the earth is at the verge of being destroyed. Let's go now to Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. For in seven more days I am going to make it rain upon the land forty days and forty nights. And I will wipe out all existence that I made from the face of the ground. So what's going on here? We remember last week uh, towards the end of our reading last week, we found that Adonai saw the wickedness of mankind. And he saw that it was great upon the earth and that every inclination of the thought of man was bent only towards evil all the time. And the word of God even goes to say that the Lord regretted that he had made humanity and his heart was deeply pained. But in the same parasha, so here we have got a scenario of the punishment which was going to be to lead to the destruction of all the earth and everything that had the breath of life in it. That was surely a very severe punishment. But then that is not the only place in this week's reading where humanity disappointed God. We find that in the same parasha, there is another uh, account of the Tower of Babel. Let's just read Genesis 11, verse 6 up to 9, so that we catch uh, the gist. Genesis 11 is about the Tower of Babel, Babel, and this was the time when the whole entire earth is the same language, and then they went and they settled in a, an area, and and they, you know, they 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 wanted to make sure that they don't scatter throughout the earth. They wanted to remain in the land of Shina, and they decided to build a tower. And this tower, uh, it was really to fight the desire of God, because God had blessed them that they should fill the whole entire earth and subdue it. But they were actually fighting God when they decided to make the Tower of Babel. And the Genesis 11 verse 6 up to 9 says, Adonai said, Look, the people are one, and all of them have the same language. So this is what they have begun to do. Now nothing they plan to do will be impossible. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there, so that they will not understand each other's language. So Adonai scattered them from there over the face of the entire, el of the entire land, and they stopped building the city. This is why it is named Babel, 
because Adonai confused the languages of the entire world there. From there, Adonai scattered them over the face of the entire land. So look at this. There are two scenarios here. The, the one scenario had a punishment where the whole entire earth was, was flooded and everything that had the breath of life in it died. This was a very severe punishment. Now we have scenario number two where the people sinned against God and they did not want to, to carry out the blessing that God gave them uh, of, scatter, of, of filling up the whole land, the whole earth and subduing it. So, um, and, but then the punishment that they received was they were now scattered. Look at this. The, it was, this came as a punishment to them. But the scattering is what God had already blessed them to be. They were blessed to be scattered throughout the earth. So why is it there are two levels of punishment on the two scenarios? One which is very severe and one which is very light. The people before the, the flood, they were punished very severely because the sin that they committed, it involved hatred against one another. It involved fighting against one another. And it involved stealing from one another and all sorts of ugly and bad things that they were doing against one another. But the people of the Bible, they sinned against God, but these people loved one another. Actually, they were working together. Actually, they were so much in agreement. So the Midrash that comes from this parasha is that uh, the people of Babel, they received a lighter punishment because even though they sinned against God, but they were people who loved one another. So when we look at this, we find that God requires indeed that we love one another. Leviticus 19 verse 18 reads, Love your neighbor as yourself. And you know, as you know, the graduation of love is peace. Everything that you and I do graduates into something else, graduates into a, a higher level of itself. When you fail to manage anger from within yourself, that anger will graduate into bitterness. And that will bring a lot of bad things in your life. In your life. And when you decide, when you, when you are able to control love in your life, that love will grow to peace. So God requires that you and me will love another until our love graduates to peace. So, well, the word of God reads in Leviticus 19, verse 18, that love your neighbor as yourself. We hear also the words that Yeshua spoke in John 14, verse 27, up to 29, wherein Yeshua says, Shalom, I live with you. My shalom, I give you, meaning peace. I live with you. My peace I give to you, but not as the world gives. Do not let your heart be afraid. So, Yeshua, he preached love for all the years that he was in his earthly ministry. But when he was now leaving to go to the Father, he started to preach peace. And he said, my peace I live with you. I pray that we, we, you and I, may know the power of peace. Let's look again at Acts chapter 1, verse 11, where it says, Acts chapter 1, verse 11, is when the uh, apostles were looking up as Yeshua was ascending to the clouds. And then... Uh, while they were staring, I will start from verse 10, Acts chapter 1, verse 10. While they were staring into heaven as he went up, suddenly two men stood with them in white clothing. They said, 
men of Galilee, why do you keep standing here, staring into heaven? This Yeshua, who was taken up to you into heaven, who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So here we have got a promise that Yeshua is coming back. So Yeshua, as he comes back, that will be the second coming of our Messiah. May you, may you and me, may we merit the second coming of the Messiah, and we, may we merit the ultimate peace that will result at the second coming of Messiah. Yes, even with the knowledge that God rewards love. The people in the Babel Tower, they were punished less severely than the people before then, the people before the flood. Why? Because while they were carrying out the sin that they were sinning, but they had love one for another. Love your neighbor as yourself. Call to.